the code is more than just T or TH. And one of the biggest things that we're going to look at is how we teach it, how we spread it across grade levels, and how much that ties learners' hands to really see the, the use in reading and writing with a code that they only have a third of for the whole first year. You know, if I have a pet mouse and I want to write about my pet mouse and it is kinder or even first grade, I could stare at my alphabet train all day long and I will never find the letter that says owl because it is not up there. And by the time I get it, if I use a standard reading series, the scope and sequences are broken down so you can see which parts of the code kids get in which grade level. The OUOW is traditionally taught in second grade. Well, my mouse is very likely to be dead by then. And I will not want to write about him at that time. I want to write about him right now when I have him. And so the part of the code that I need to read or to write about what's exciting to me, I won't get for another year and a half or two years if I'm in kinder, or three years, really, if it's the beginning of kinder. That's way too long to wait for access to the whole code, especially when you need it first thing, because we're reading and writing across the instructional day from as early as the time they walk into school. So the question that we really want to kind of have running in the back of our mind throughout today is, with what? What do my kids actually have to read and write with? What do they have? What has my reading series given them to bring to the table so they can actually kind of dive in and partake in this activity armed with enough of the code to do something with it. And then when they walk away, of course, the more you bring to the table, the more value you take away. So if all you have is a B, D, and a P, that's not going to give you very much to use to dive into this story or to tell me what happened over your holiday break. So if you think about it like that and you really step a, take a step back, you start to visualize this elephant in the room that we have to really work Let's around. It, that E-R-I-R-U-R secret that that little first, year, first uh, week kindergartner was doing. Do you know? Hi kids, do you want to know about the secrets about these? So E-R-I-R-U-R. -R -R. When they get together, they hop in their cars, they drive crazy, and they say, driving their cries crazy. But when you grow up, you don't do that. Okay. Now here's what I love the most. She let the cat out of the bag on where this lives in her brain by what she said at the end. This wasn't our controlled vowel skill being retold in preparation for a spelling test. This was a life lesson. She had connected to that quote unquote skill lots of social and emotional experiences that one would have having been in a car. Like maybe sometimes she was in a car and dad cussed because he had to stop so fast that he almost hit the next car. So that stuck out because mom yelled at dad the whole way home. Maybe one time, she actually hit her head on the, the thing because she didn't put her seatbelt on when the car went. Err. Maybe another time, uh, they actually got on a little fender bender. All those social emotional experiences actually anchor that skill. As opposed to the alternative, which is how many times can you practice the skill? Because however many times you can practice the R controlled vowel skill will dictate whether or not they know that skill before you can move on to the next one. And oh no, over the summer they will slide if they're not continuing to practice that phonics skill and that phonics skill. These aren't skills to them. And you could tell that because she said, now when you grow up, you don't do that. She didn't say, so don't forget to say the er sound in the word turn. <laughs> this was living in a place that had a different purpose. But the beauty of it is, it doesn't make it any less valuable for that purpose. So if she saw the word bird, she could still go, at least with a little modeling. Duh. And once she connects the dots and things, oh my gosh, I just read that word. I, I get it. I get the letters that are in that word. They're the ones that go, er, and that's why the words, but er, I get it. It's that moment of get itness that is where all kids are different. Some kids instantly get, oh, this is the key to unlock this word and this word and this word, like Johnny. Other kids are like Lulu. They just walk around and go, ah, we love letters, ah. <laughs> they don't get the power of what that key can unlock because they're not yet ready for that cause effect connection, but that's where the modeling comes in. So you're building a buffet and then you're eating from it all day long. And that E-R-I-R-U-R -R secret that that little first year, first uh, week kindergartner was doing, do you know that skill sits on end of first grade scope and sequence and for a couple reading series, second grade, beginning of the year? Why wait? This wasn't four days into kindergarten. Why wait? Why would we want to wait if we don't have to? Programs are not, uh, are not ideal when it comes to the code because a program, and that's not what this is, by the way. These are tools to just make sense of things that don't make sense. Programs have a specific amount of time that they're supposed to be taught in a particular order in a way that you're supposed to do them. 
Tools are something you can use all day long, and you're going to read all day long. So there's never a moment where they don't maybe need to pull out of their back pocket this one or that one or have access to other things that you have laid out on this buffet. Even that better alphabet that I was mentioning earlier, while you're doing that, I said that takes two weeks to two months, you are simultaneously tossing out secrets. Because if any kid is paying any attention to what you say at all, and you've just said A says A, or A says apple, ah, 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 and then you march two feet to your calendar and you show them the word August, you lose all credibility. Because if they're paying any attention at all, they're going, hey, wait a minute, isn't that exactly the same A over here that's over here? And didn't she just say it's supposed to say at ah, or A? And now she's pointing to it, and not only is she not saying A ah, or A, I think she's making a sound she made for a different letter. I don't know what it is because I don't know my letters yet, but I do recall something else that was supposed to say ah. So that's when the brain starts to turn off and it, tries, it doesn't bother trying to account for discrepancies because the discrepancies become the norm. The brain's a pattern-making machine. It will pull a pattern. The problem is sometimes the pattern is there is no pattern. Anything goes, so it doesn't even matter. So I give up. It just is. It just does whatever. Who cares? We want the opposite. We want kids to follow their nature. Why? 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 You know, we want to keep that analytical diagnostic thinking, and we want it all day long.